Namaskar everyone <laughs> and welcome from the balcony. It's a little bit windy today and I hope that you can hear me well. It's a marvelous day though. The sun is peeking out of some dark clouds but, but all good. So welcome to a brand new day. I meet you and greet you with the peace of the inner world, the love of the inner world. And when I say inner world, your essence, the energies of your essence, that which you are never changes. It's at the it's at the core of your being. It never changes. We wear a human animal, we wear a human body that is a living, living animal. We are not humans. <laughs> we are quantum beings. We are energy beings. With the center of infinite consciousness. The goal is to experience all that we are to experience the very center of being, the very core of being. And that changes our, our lives dramatically if we can experience the core of our being. When you learn to live from there, from essence, life is no longer the same. You see the whole play differently. Then you see the, the play. But it's not a battlefield, it's a play. I meet you and greet you from there, from the essence. And you can only find the, the essence when you let go of your hold. To the material world. We are equipped with human senses because we adorn a human body. The human body has a gender. So we get the, the consciousness of uh, procreation from the human body. In the inner world, with the energy body, we don't need to procreate. We can create things simply out of our mind. That has a reality of its own. In the other world, we create the reality using the mind and the pranas. The life force. In the physical world, we do things using the body, the, the gross body. And the gross body is, uh, it is a reptilian brain, survival brain. Reproductive consciousness territorial instincts. So we need to distinguish what is what is primal and human and what is of our spiritual being, of a subtle body. And see the impulses. In the subtle body there is the there is a drive to come to a center of love and peace and harmony. In the physical body we are designed to survive and and, and thrive in, in a material sense. So it's all part of a play. So though we adorn a human body, we are never the human body. We act in and through the human body, but we just don't realize that we're not awakened to it. So welcome to a new day, everyone. A new day in the material world. The earth has moved, rotated, and so we have night and day. That holds the body in a circadian rhythm. It needs to go to bed. It, need to, it needs to detox. <laughs> it needs to excrete. 
it needs to ingest food as well, drink water, breathe air. That's a human body, that's human life, that's a human experience. And it's marvelous when you can see it for what it is and not get caught up in it and, and think falsely that you are the human body, which you will never be. Yesterday I spoke about the need to be compassionate. Why should we be compassionate? Compassion is a soul impulse. Evolutionary impulse of the soul to be compassionate, kind, loving. I want to say today that we came into this world, we entered into this body at birth of the body. And we have come into this material life. We have come into this material dimension. In Hindu wisdom it's called Bhuloka, the earthly dimension. We have come into this equipped with a physical body. Now if you notice your physical body is aging every day, <laughs> whether you accept it or not. It slowly ages, moment by moment, until you see the visible signs of aging and until you experience the differences in the, in the body that comes with, with aging. So you come into, into a material vehicle, body, animal, that is aging, so it, it, it gives you only a certain lifespan in time and at a certain age it begins to deteriorate and it will slowly deteriorate right until the end and so you came here <laughs> and you're going to leave here <laughs> you didn't come with this stage you, you met this stage and you have the opportunity to inter interact with this stage. And you're going to leave this stage at some point. And you're going to carry nothing material with you. All the accumulation of wealth, all the progeny, the children. <laughs> all the things you're going to leave right here, just as you met it. What is it that you do carry? The life experiences that are stored in your memory, in your consciousness. That's what you're going to carry. And so, what kind of memory are you going to carry? Memories of uh, learning and growing. Learning more about you. Your subtle existence. and learning how to clean it up, how to refine the senses, the subtle senses, through the gross experience of the body and the gross world, which involves all the, the things that you build relationships with, all the people, environment, all the events that you experience, What comes out of that? How you grow from it? What you've learned from it? That's what you're going to carry with you. So if you had a lot of stress and a lot of um, conflicts that came through the human experience, a lot of jealousy, possession, greed, you got more uh, e e egotistic, more selfish, more proud. So are you going to carry that? Or, and, and are you going to carry attachment to the human world? that you become so bonded that the vibration remains the same as the human world and you're just waiting to come back into another body to continue the greed and jealousy and pride and hate and aggression and the primal thinking? Or are you going to use the experience to grow in consciousness, to understand all that you are, to evolve? So the world is for your own evolution. 
not for anybody else. So when you come here, it's not about anybody else. It's about what you are learning and growing from and in. And that's why, that's why I say that each to his own in this world, accept the world for what it is. Don't try to change it to what you want it to be. Use it to transform yourself and you grow. And that is what you're going to carry into the next world, into the next dimension. The moment you catch the idea that the world is meant for your growth, for your evolution, for your transformation, then you will see life differently and you will use every experience to grow, to learn. And every adversity you will see it as a blessing. And uh, I, I always think and say that adversity can only make you stronger. So ensure that all the memories that you are developing and are going to take with you are memories of learning and growing. And, and you need to do that lovingly. You need to, to grow lovingly. You need to deal with adversity lovingly. Love takes away the stress. Love puts you back into your seat of soul power, into your essence. Love brings integrity to your, to your being, strength. That's why the Christ said to love, love the divine. Love the higher self within you with all that you have, all of your mind, all of your soul, all of your heart, all of your might, the love, the God within. And to love the world outside of you, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So to operate from a center of love is to operate in flow and without stress. But true love, love that needs nothing, love that doesn't want to possess anything, love that is free, love that is charitable, love that is understanding and compassionate and empathic. That's a love that you need. Look at the sun, it's shining on all. It's shining its radiance on all. Why can't we shine the light of love within us towards all? No judgment. So we need to learn to live from that center of love and charity and goodness. But because we have come from the darkness, that's a play of the universe that the consciousness moves from darkness to light, from tamas to sattva. We are born with these, this limited consciousness of feeling human rather than divine. And we need to, to strive to come out of it. And we need to do so uh, without stress, without conflict, without battle, so with wisdom. So the prayer every day is for wisdom. Give me the wisdom to see differently. So that's, re that's really a call for, higher, for more consciousness, for higher consciousness. Give me the wisdom to see differently, to think differently, to act differently. So when, when we are in human consciousness, we, we, we're in a local consciousness. When we act in and through the body in human consciousness, we act in a local consciousness. But our soul has what is called non-local consciousness. And if you can wrap your mind around this, that our soul lives in omnipresence. It lives in a, in a field of infinite consciousness that gives us omnipresence. That means that though my body is centered here, my inner being can be can connect with anything across this world and feel in oneness with it, feel connected to it, feel bonded to it. So we have not only 
the physical contact with the world that we that happens in and through this body but we have soul connection with the entire universe with the entire world around us and we connect to all those beings that we feel compatible with we connect to them so that means all of those all those of you who know me and I know you we can connect very powerfully across space to soul consciousness in soul consciousness and that tells us about the holographic that speaks to the holographic principle that we all at the energetic level subtle level exist in each other so now as i sit i am acting in and through a physical body looking through the eyes speaking with the voice feeling the the coolness of the atmosphere the warmth of the sun i'm experiencing a human body but as i focus on the depth of my inner being i feel so beyond the human body in a space that is infinitely loving no limits allowed to the peace that i feel to the joy that i feel in my heart they are beyond the human yet they can influence the human yet the human is designed the human body is designed with a brain and nervous system that also produce uh, neurotransmitters chemicals in the, in the in the bloodstream that are the feel good chemicals and that comes from my attitude my thinking in the inner space so as i change my my consciousness and energy patterns in the inside i'm also changing my body so when i think oh, I, i love you my body mm, i love you my body i love you my body you're so precious to me and i let this beautiful energy of love this flows through my body and i can feel it as a real experience a, a subtle a beautiful energy that is coursing through my body and i can feel it the joy it brings to every cell my every part of my body just lights up with its love and when i make that a meditation oh my god my body thrives and then the mantras become very easy to flow in the mind oh oh with the in breath oh with the out breath oh so hum so infinite being hum the body so i hold the body in that space of infinite being so hum hum is the individual i which of course is the local i in the body and some how may the local eye in the body and so is the infinite space so i may choose a long mantra longer mantra let like a guy three because i want i i, I love the the guy three speaks to the inner light cleaning out a space and illumining the intellect om purbo swa tat savitur varanam bhargo devasya dhimahi dhiyo yana prakshu gayat and when you understand the meaning of it the words it's beautiful so i'm down my spinal column now energetically and i can i'm just tapping to every chakra in that loving space in that central space of loving and there i bring out the best in my body a simple meditation uh and you feel so so fulfilled the body feels so wonderful and that is where yoga and shigong gets its power from centered in the inner space but operating in the outer space absolute joy this is what meditation should bring to you So you can touch your outer world energetically. 
the question is often asked, which I'll bring here now, that when people refuse your love, reject it, or your efforts to be loving and kind. Do you accept that, or can you do something about that? With your soul being, your non-local being? Yeah, you can continue to hold them in love. Continue to hold them in that healing space, that transformative space on the inside. Pray for their well-being. And because you have a connection with them, you actually touch, touch their inner being. So even though they outwardly reject you, on the inside you can touch them. And that's how we can help to pray for our world. That's how we can help to bring change in the world. We join with all those souls who are praying for more light in the world, more healing, more consciousness in the world. May there be peace, love and harmony in our world. May all thrive. May all be awakened to higher consciousness. And when you say this, and you really mean it, may humankind live in harmony with all living beings. When you say that, and you really mean it, you really begin to create a wave that connects with all those other waves that are coming from people who are praying. And that has a profound effect on the energy of the world. And the more souls pray, the more souls send out these loving wishes, we co-create a tremendous amount of energy that can create a change in the outer space. So that's how we can change our outer space, just sitting in one place, but we are sending out waves of energy into the outer space. And these waves are real, I can feel it. It moves through my body when I, when I send them to my body. And it changes the atmosphere around me when I, when I hold the entire space in my being. Because we have a non-local being, an expansive being, a soul being that has no limits. The potential for non-local activity, the potential for soul power to influence the space is extremely great. You can influence anything. You can change the energy of a building, the energy of the workspace, the energy of the home. And those some are challenging, but don't let your light become diminished because of the challenge. No, no, let it grow even more. Let your compassion be even more when you see people in distress around you. Let your compassion growl. Can you do it? Can you open your heart to just love your world unconditionally and without judgment? With no need to criticize another, but to be compassionate understanding and supportive. To see that everyone just sees the world from their perspective. All we need to do is to be the strong example to influence them and change will come naturally. Don't force change. Once we change and once we maintain that change and stay in it, things around us will begin to change. So, a lifetime is only a lifetime. It's a limited time. So, may we all make a good use of the lifetime. Don't waste a lifetime. Don't use your energies just to possess and, and to flaunt your power and develop more ego traits. No. Use the lifetime to grow in consciousness, to evolve, to know who you are, to refine your senses, to be a better person and to be a blessing to the world. So this is my wish for you today and this Monday. What I have said today, 
I hope will inspire you to think differently and to act differently and to be differently. It's a marvelous world, marvelous experience to be in this world and to make the effort to bring more light into it, not darkness. Don't be a burden to the world. Be a blessing. Have a blessed Monday, everyone. Always a joy to speak with you. Stay in the inner space. I, even as you act out, be centered in your loving, compassionate being. Knowing that in love, we are in the divine. In peace, we are in the divine. In compassion, we are in the divine. Being the divine. Have a blessed day, everyone. Om Shanti. 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 Peace. Peace.